Hey all you beautiful people, welcome to Arizona and Utah. Good morning, YouTubes. I'm Katie from Aurora, and this is Fluffy Dog. We have just arrived in Kanab, Utah, and picked up our permit to hike the Perea Canyon. The Kanab BLM office was a madhouse this morning, but fortunately, there was not an actual line. It's just everybody waiting for their wave permits and the wave lottery. Our, I was able to walk right in, get my Perea permit, and walk right out. We're headed to Lee's Ferry this morning, right after we gas up and get some windshield wiper fluid because I was not expecting quite so many bugs this trip because it's kind of cold. But there are a lot of bugs and they're splattered all over the windshield. We're going to get a shuttle at Lee's Ferry with Grand Staircase Discovery Tours who are going to take us to the White House Trailhead to start hiking the Perea Canyon. We have arrived at Lee's Ferry and it's gorgeous down here. It's actually fall down here. Look at that gorgeous color back there. We have a lot of crap to do before our shuttle gets here. I have my pile of stuff back there along with Fluffy Dog and I've got to get all that organized and uh, ready to go for when our shuttle gets here. And it'll be here in like 30 minutes. So, I've got some work to do. Lots of dog food for the fluffy. Normally you don't have to smush things down so much, but I'm using a dry bag and I'm gonna make sure all the air is out of it. My pack is ready, Fluffy's pack is ready, and we're just waiting for a ride. I've got about 10 minutes to spare where I'm gonna scarf down a sandwich and wait for my ride. It's about a two hour drive back to Utah. We're in Arizona right now, uh, where the end of the trail is, but it starts in Utah, right on the border. And we will end up right back here, where our car is. Fluffy and I have arrived at the White House Trailhead. Got dropped off by our shuttle service, and we're about getting ready to hit the trail. We're only gonna go about a mile or two down the trail tonight and set up camp. It's gonna be a short day which is good because my pack weighs a ton. See those big rocks behind me? That's the trailhead. There's a nice little campground there if you want to stay the night. We we're going to get away from the campground a little bit. You want to go down there? You don't have to jump down the bank. You can go around or you can jump down the bank. We are not even a minute into the hike and we've reached our first water crossing. There's going to be hundreds of them so there's no point in trying to keep your feet dry. The river drainage is pretty wide at the beginning for the first few miles as you can see behind me. It's wide open and then somewhere in here we're going to camp. Don't know how far down we're going to get but it's going to be before the canyon narrows up. We've only gone about a mile down river, but we're going to go ahead and set up camp here. It's getting late. It's been a long day. Really just wanted to hike far enough today just to get away from the trailhead. So that's what we're doing. Hey, buddy. You ready for your dinner? You ready for your dinner? Scratched a butt. Scratched a butt. Yeah, our life is good. The prickly branches out of your butt. Was really stuck. Yeesh. There you go. Good boy. <laughs> Here you go. You want your chow? Yeah? Is it dinner time? I realize there's a whole river here and he does drink that water um, without filtration. That's, he does fine, but I would prefer to encourage him to drink 
nice filtered water, so I'm going to pour in some water too. Yeah, you eat your dinner. Look at this little dude. He's actually really big. We're going to move you somewhere so your path isn't right in the path of my tent. I hope he's not venomous or anything. We're just going to... Ah! Oh, sorry, bud. Didn't mean to land you upside down. No worse for the wear. There he goes. Don't eat the bug. Don't eat the bug. There, oh, he's drooled on the bug a little bit, but I think the bug will be okay. Fortunately, the soft sand is going to make setting up the tent a breeze. Probably. <laughs> I spoke too soon. All right, take it back about the tent being easy to put set up. It was kind of a chilly night last night, but I managed to stay warm enough. We have gotten camp packed up and are ready to hit the trail. We have six or seven miles to go today till we get to the confluence of the Perea and Buckskin Gulch. It's a lovely day. We have waited till the sun has come up a bit before I start hiking because the water's cold. I wanted my uh, wetsuit socks to dry out and that has occurred, so we are just about ready to hit the trail. <laughs> are you excited? You having a good time? What you doing? What's in there? Is there something living in the sandstone? Is there a critter? Some people on horseback just went by. I think Fluffy Dog was just about to lose his little mind. Fluffy doesn't know it, but Fluffy's got a problem. This is the nature of Fluffy's problem. He has one of those sticker, giant branch of one of those sticker bushes stuck to his rear end and uh, I'm gonna try to get it off. Oh my goodness. That. Lots of little ones stuck in there too. We're at about three and a half miles in, I think, and it's starting to get a little narrower and the walls are getting taller. Good boy. I have to stop myself and remind myself to look around. I spend a lot of time looking at my feet, make sure I'm not going to slide around in the mud and or step in quicksand. But this place is so pretty. I just got to remember to stop and look. Of course, I am ready to get back, get to camp since my feet are really cold now, and I'm hungry for dinner. We have made it to Slide Rock, and that is Slide Rock behind me. It's 
chunk of the canyon that fell off. And it definitely gives you some perspective that geologic time includes now. <laughs> a chunk of the canyon could break off pretty much at any moment and smush ya. Well, I guess it's better than if you're gonna die. I'd rather be smushed by a chunk of canyon than die at work or die never having done this sort of thing. Definitely a little muddy walking underneath slide rock. Had to watch my step. There's been a few places in the canyon where the mud has been a, a little slippery, but overall not too bad. And the water, while it's getting colder later in the day, is not that bad. Especially since it's mid-November. And watch where I'm putting my feet. There's where we're going. That's where we, that's where we came from. That is Buckskin Gulch. We're choosing our campsite right at the confluence. Can't believe nobody's already gotten this spot. It's not actually the best camping spot, especially since it's not gonna get morning sun, but you're not gonna get good morning sun in here anyway. So I'll take it. This morning we are going to be hiking up buckskin just a just a little bit. Um, show you what buckskin looks like. Actually kind of looks like what we're in right now, which is place with very tall walls and pretty skinny. It gets skinnier than this though. Um, we won't go that far, I don't think. <laughs> Fluffy says good morning. <laughs> Is that, does that mean you're ready to go? Even with waiting till it was a bit later, it's 10 a.m. now, I still had to heat up some water and pour hot water down my uh, water socks and shoes to warm up my feet before I started hiking in the the cold water because my feet were little blocks of ice this morning and I hadn't even done anything yet. Hadn't even gotten in the water yet, so. Whew. Gotta be prepared. Good boy. Yeah, you can see how how deep just Fluffy's footprint is in that stuff. You gotta be gotta be careful. Actually, it looks like there's some water flowing in Buckskin Gulch, and I wish I'd noticed this last night because the water is nice and clear and doesn't have all the silt in it that the Perea does, and so it would be a lot nicer for filtering. But oh well, I'm not gonna spend much time in Buckskin because. It's cold and shady in here, and I want to get some progress down canyon to find a little bit of sun, hopefully. It's very pretty, though. Buckskin Gulch. Just a little bit of it. All right, let's go get our pack and head back down the Perea. Hear all that whining Fluffy was doing? He's so impatient. He's such a wonderful critter. But his hiking now paces me by a lot. Really is very pretty. Especially here in the kind of buckskin portion of Perea, where the walls are straight and high and pretty close together.
What do you think, Fluffy Dog? Are you tired of all this? Are you ready for to find a camp? I think camp's not too far away. Yeah. But look at that. In the meantime. I think we've found our camp spot for the night. First thing I'm gonna do is go over to this wall spring behind me and see if there's fresh water coming out of it or enough to fill anything up. I just filled up all my water things at that nice little spring behind me. Um, actually filmed myself walking over there, filling up my things, but <laughs> I wasn't in frame. So all you see is the spring and me walking towards it and disappearing. There was plenty of water to fill up my water. In fact, I filled up my woo, camp sink in addition to my bottles and huh, pretty happy about that. Got to filter it all now, but that's still, that's awesome not to have to wait till morning to have water. Now that I have the water situation taken care of, first thing I like to do at camp is give Fluffy his dinner. He's, he's a trooper for doing all of this and uh, he's usually hungry by the time we get to camp. So I'm going to get him some dinner. Fluffy Dog is carrying his own dinner bowls. Oh, I can get him out. He's got a rough wear pack. It weighs four pounds. It, he's carrying his dinner bowls, a sleeping bag, a sleeping pad, and um, his booties, a muzzle, just in case, and a couple of fluffy first aid things. It weighs four pounds total and it's balanced to the gram. I was very uh, careful about balancing out Fluffy's weight. I wanted him not to have any issues with it. So. Also inside of the rougher packs, in each pocket, each of the big pockets, I have his stuff in a dry bag because I knew that he would be dragging these through some water. I didn't want to get his sleeping bag wet. So there you go. Fluffy's a very good boy and he deserves to get his dinner first before I do anything else. While Fluffy eats his dinner, my feet out of these shoes. The, your shoes, shoes get soaking wet on this trip. And in the morning times, the ground is cold. So you want some kind of camp shoe. These are my camp shoes. They're ballet shoes. They weigh nothing, which is why I brought them. But Crocs would definitely work better. Kind of missing my Crocs, but I didn't want to carry the weight. So uh, trade-offs tent. We're going to do the tent now. It's tent. <laughs> it's tent time. There are several places I could choose to set up my tent at this little particular camp spot. There's actually a nice place up in the trees, but it's a little slanty. And right where I am is really nice too, but I'm actually going to go right about where Fluffy is because on the other side of the canyon is an overhang and I don't want to be underneath that overhang. I don't expect the canyon walls to come falling down, but you never do, you know, nobody plans that. So I'm not going to sleep underneath the overhang just in case. I'm not expecting a lot of wind. So I'm putting in the minimum number of stakes. Which on this tent is six. It seems like a lot of stakes. This is the Big Agnes Mountain Glow Fly Tent, something like that. It's about the right size for me and Fluffy. We both fit in there well with our stuff. And it lights up. 
which is totally and completely a superfluous thing that you do not need because <laughs> it pays a lot. But I gotta tell you, it's really nice to just be able to turn on your light. I really like it. This works really well for me because I lose things and in the middle of the night when I need to go out and go pee and I'm trying to find my headlight, headlamp and I can't, the little mountain glow lights, they're just there. Awesome. I just push the button. I don't have to worry about losing them. So yes, they weigh probably more than most people would want to carry, even though they're very light. But I really like them. Have to have a rock for shaking these down because this soil is sandy, but surprisingly difficult to get mistakes into. Fluffy's got his Thermarest, his own Thermarest for the first time this trip. Mainly because he, he he likes to get on sleep on top of me and my Thermarest. So this trip I got him his own, hoping that he would sleep on his own Thermarest and not on top of my legs. So far it's worked out well. He likes his Thermarest. Now I've just gotta blow him up. I need to get one of those bag inflators so that I don't have to sit here and blow up the thermorex. Ooh, thermorex. Before every trip, especially my solo trips, I leave an itinerary with people who know to come looking when I go missing. And part of that is using the inReach and I try to message them each day, especially when I'm in a very remote area such as this and let them know I'm okay. We're having chicken and dumplings tonight. Really fancy. I chose this one because it was on top of all the other ones in the bag and therefore seemed a worthy choice for this evening. Mountain House chicken and dumplings. Mm -mm -mm. Good morning. Are you ready to be awake? It, oh, you've got sticks stuck in your tail again. Is it breakfast? You think so? <laughs> You're a good boy. Let's get some breakfast. He's being such a good boy this trip. you good boy. How are you feeling? What are you doing? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go hiking down a canyon? It is not awesome fun crossing the river first thing in the morning when the water is still really cold. Whew. My feet are basically frozen and we've only crossed one little stream. It's so cool how these have eroded away. Here's another great little spring. This could be big spring. I don't know, it's a uh, producing plenty of water. Seems like the further down the canyon we get, the more and more springs there are. There is a huge rock fall in front of it. You would not have wanted to be here when all these rocks came down. Good boy.
Water does such cool things to rocks. Just looks like somebody took an ice cream scoop and scooped out the walls. Fluffy has found something. Oh dear. It looks like it is a very dead bighorn sheep. Is, oh yeah, he's been dead a bit. Whew. Not so long that he doesn't stink like crazy though. Oh, oh, Fluffy, no, do not roll in it. <laughs> yeah, well, rest in peace, little, little sheepy. Fluffy, you don't need to. App, app, app. You don't need to roll in it. I know. That seems like. It's an amazing thing to roll in. Come on, let's go. Good boy. Fortunately, even though he really likes disgusting things, Fluffy is a good dog. And he listens 99.9% .9 of the time. We've had one brief, glorious moment of sunshine. Literally, that's where you can see is the extent of the sunshine. I almost took off my coat. Except for that is what we're headed to. And it's not so sunny where we're going. Every crossing's a little different. Oh, this is pretty muddy. Most of them haven't been too crazy muddy. This one is. But look at what we see down the river. And you don't want to go right next to the walls because it's actually really deep there. You look for the riffles and the riffles are usually shallower, oftentimes rocky, but shallower. is actually a really cool part of the canyon. Lots of fault lines coming in. Um, not actual canyons, not actual side canyons, but everything is, is, the rock is very broken up here. It looks really cool. I think I found one of the very few sunny spots in this part of the canyon. We're going to stop and have lunch here. This is life right now. It's not bad. <laughs> Luffy has his own food in the bowl down there. But he prefers my sandwich. The sky is so blue today. It's absolutely stunning. Especially on the backdrop of the, the red <laughs> the red sandstone walls, the blue blue sky is wonderful. Starting to warm up a little bit in this sunny spot. It's a nice change. It's, it's quite chilly um, hiking through the canyon. My feet are starting to warm up. You can eat any of your lunch. Or just mamas. It's just mamas. What do you see? We came upon a very not well 
bat. A cute little guy. I felt bad for it. Uh, but it was not a healthy bat. If I had to guess, I'd say it was more trauma than neurologic because it was actually trying to get away from us. But no sense in taking chances and getting up and close personal with it. Uh, Fluffy is up to date on his rabies vaccines. And Fluffy's mama is rabies vaccinated. But I do not want to put either of those to the test. So we will leave the poor bat to its fate, unfortunately. So I took a wrong turn looking for Rather Canyon and look what I found. This place is really cool. It's this little hidden spring. I would not have known that it was here if I hadn't taken a wrong turn. Very glad I did. And that little entrance right there. I don't see a giant freaking arch. This is a really cool spring area, but obviously not Rather Canyon. Well, that was not Rather Canyon. I'm going to keep my eyes open and see if it pops up. If not, then I will just camp at the next nice little spring area. And there should be one coming up pretty quickly. And I will get out the actual topo map from Todd's Desert Hiking Guide and compare that to my Gaia and compare that to the BLM map and see if I can figure out where I'm going wrong there, not finding that canyon. Look at that. That is gorgeous, isn't it? It's beautiful. And it seems like it's sunsetting time because of the way the light is, but it's not. It's like two in the afternoon. That's just canyon light. It's beautiful. I think we are passing Rather Canyon right now, but it's hard to tell. That's the riverbank, and I don't see any obvious way up. And the riverbank on the other side, which is a camping area. I also don't see any obvious way up. So we're going to walk down the stream a little bit and see if we can find our way up on either side of those. Right. Gonna put another mountain house meal on. While that's cooking, I'll let you know my two big mistakes this trip. One of those mistakes is why I'm sitting here eating Mountain House meals, because that was not the original plan. I'll let you know. This one's more complicated than the other ones. It has parts. First, apparently, you rehydrate the chicken, and then you got to take the chicken out, and then rehydrate the potatoes which is fine it actually looks like the chicken actually looks like chunks of real chicken which i think is nice um however two mistakes i made this trip one a friend of mine who does so uh, through hiking and has done the continental divide trail and the colorado trail makes wonderful homemade dehydrated meals and she had some leftover and gave them to me and I was like great this is gonna be fantastic for my, my backpacking trip and I forgot them at home so 
<sighs> mistake number one. It's not a big deal because I was able to stop by the store and grab some Mountain House, but I would much rather be eating her homemade <laughs> dehydrated meals than Mountain House mush. Uh, so that's mistake number one. Mistake number two, I forgot to bring the hike description with me. I have a map, I have a detailed topo map, I have uh, the little BLM map that they give you. I have my Gaia GPS. So I have maps. I can read the maps. <laughs> but on my Topo maps, I don't have some of the major landmarks marked, nor do I have them marked on my Gaia. And so this afternoon, trucking around trying to find Rather Canyon and having a difficult time of it. There's no way I can get lost in this canyon. It's not, that's not a matter of getting lost, but I'm missing some things along the way. Uh, this is a straight, this canyon is a straight shot down. You just follow the river for 38 miles and you'll get there. <sighs> oh, well, not a big mistake. It is recoverable, a recoverable mistake. I'll read the hike description when I'm done and See what I missed. Here's the fluff. All tucked in for the night. It is colder this morning than it has been the past few nights. One reason I know that is my shoes are frozen solid. So I'm heating up some water to thaw out my shoes. And then we're going to go hiking up Rather Canyon. That's frozen. Frozen. And the solution to my frozen shoes this morning. Boiling water. <laughs> Don't know how much of a walk we have back here. Anywhere between quarter of a mile and a mile. I would know exactly how far if I had my trail guide. Fluffy's super happy to be hiking without his pack today. Or at least for this morning. This is a lovely little woodland trail up this canyon. And there are some trail obstacles Whoa, under. <laughs> There's a spring-fed stream up this whole canyon that's really nice. See how well I can duck under some of these trees. That one's not too bad. Oh, I stay ducked. Oh, climbing up through the cottonwoods that are down. Not the easiest thing ever. That's okay. Are you really happy? Are you really happy, Fluffy? You are, aren't you? The arch is first coming into view. It's really quite impressive. You can get some lovely views of the arch down here, but we're going to go up. It doesn't look that far, but I trust me, this is a steep, a steep, scrambly, sandy trail. That doesn't look as steep as it is. That's probably at least a 40 degree slope. It's steep enough that I'm almost at the arch and I'm contemplating not going up that. It was a long, steep scramble up here, but it's actually a pretty cool arch. 
not sure I would climb up here again. It's it's neat, uh, but you can see the arch from way down below. And the scramble up here is a little bit sketchy. That's the only reason, just because it's sketchy. And it's through deep sand. Deep sand is not fun. It's a pretty view up here. What do you think of the arch? Because I'm ready to go now. I had my snack. I've explored the arch area. Why are we standing here? I'll see if Fluffy can... If you can figure out how steep that is, by the way, Fluffy's negotiating it. It's kind of doing what I'm doing. Which is sliding down bits of it. There's Flu, waiting down the trail for us. He's such a good boy. We've just finished packing up camp after hiking Rather Canyon. Had a snack, finished packing up, and some nasty, nasty clouds are rolling in. Not too worried about the flash flood risk, mainly because we're in the wider section of the canyon now. Definitely worried about the water getting colder and deeper because it's already cold. <laughs> and it's about the right depth where I can totally tolerate it. Deeper would not be so much fun. But seeing the clouds, I have put the rain gear at the top of my pack just in case. I do not want to get rained upon. But hopefully it will just pass us by. Fluffy has been getting covered in these little things. They are sharp. And they stick in his little fluffy fur. Every night we have to pull them out of his fur and cut them out of his fur. This would think, oh, I'm pushing him too far. This is a long way even for Fluffy. He goes running up some damn sand dunes all by himself. Because it's fun. Well, where are you going to get down? Yeah, I, that's not a good choice. You got to come down this way. There you go. Keep on going. Don't watch out for the cacti. There you go. <laughs> Big goofball. I started feeling raindrops, so I was like, oh crap. And I got out my <laughs> raincoat and the minute I put my raincoat on, it stopped raining. This is a spring coming up. It's producing decent amounts of water. I think that's shower spring. It's got a nice little, nice little pool. Got my rain jacket on because it started raining. But I really wanted to stop and have some lunch. The plan was to stop by Shower Spring and have some lunch. And it had stopped. It had started raining and then stopped raining and now it started raining again. And even with my rain jacket, I don't want to sit and eat lunch in the rain. So I'm going to carry on. Hopefully the rain stops soon and we can have some lunch. The sun isn't out yet, but it at least stopped raining. So. We're going to have some lunch. It's a very pretty little spot we found for lunch. That's what it looks like behind us. Lunch today is a prosciutto and brie sandwich. <laughs> a very messy, very messy sandwich. But prosciutto and brie keep surprisingly well as long as it's not super hot weather. I, this is day four on the trail with this in my backpack and it's fine. It's good. Assuming I don't get really, really sick later. 
your own mileage may vary. Each section of the river has its own challenges. We just went through what I would call the sandbar section where there's giant, giant sandbars on either side of the river, which sounds nice because then you're not walking in the river, but then you're slogging through deep sand and bushwhacking through all the reeds and such. Then right after that was a very rocky area where lots and lots of big boulders had fallen in the river. And that kind of sucked too because it made the river narrower and faster. And it was a little more difficult to find places to cross safely, at least with Fluffy Dog. Now, <laughs> we're at an area that so far I like much better than the preceding two, where I have some nice wide open banks and can just cross the stream from bank to bank instead of fording down the stream or crossing over giant sand dunes. So this section I like. Sandy bank to sandy bank. That is so much easier than what I've been doing. You get to these little bouldery areas and it's hard to choose which way to go. Fluffy has chosen his route. We're gonna follow him. We're both choosing to bypass that waterfall. Lead the way, buddy. You're doing good. Looks like we may have struck upon a legitimate trail. This might be the start of the high water trail. And this has to be last reliable spring. Wow, that's very pretty. I was trying to figure out why this trail veered off. And it's because there's petroglyphs up here. Various figures around a circle. That looks like it could be a, to me, like a God dedicated to the big horn sheep, maybe. It's me a shepherd and his little sheep. Those are big horn sheep. Weird alien dudes with lots of appendages. Lightning or snakes coming down and hitting the sheep god thing. Sheep, 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 sheeps. I'm thinking this really big spring behind me is probably last reliable spring, but I don't know that for sure because I don't have my hike description. My goal today is to get to hike as far as I feel like hiking past last reliable spring. And I know we're in the general vicinity of that. It's a little hard to be motivated today. It is rainy and overcast. It feels much later than it is. It's only about a quarter to three. It feels like it's five or six o'clock. But I'm gonna hike for another hour or two. And I may be breaking out my raincoat again because I don't want my down to get wet. We're about two miles down the river and it's still raining. I think it's going to rain for quite some time. It's very pretty though. I mean, look at, I don't know if you can really tell, but it's very pretty. And I suppose if it weren't raining, this section sometimes can be very hot, so we benefit in everything. The rain has made the river faster and a little more treacherous in spots. It's not really treacherous, but definitely running into deeper mud, a little quicksand down here, and it's more than knee deep in spots, which is a problem for Fluffy. He needs help getting across that, which is not a problem. I can help him, but it definitely scares him a little bit. He's, he's concerned when we have to cross stuff that is deeper than where he can stand. He can swim. He just doesn't like to. He's just very not cool with swimming.
I think somewhere in this area is going to be our camp for the night. What do you think, buddy? I'm just going to hang in the tent. Eventually I'm going to have to kick you out of the tent though so I can so I can pack up the tent. Yeah, I'm going to have to pack up the tent. Then you're you're blanky. <laughs> He's not convinced. We are up at first light and I've been packing stuff up, ready to go. It rained all night last night, which was not awesome, but at least it's not raining right now. So I'm taking this opportunity to get stuff packed up, get hit the trail, and this will be the last day on the trail. We should reach our Jeep tonight. I've got, if I've done my math right, about 10 miles to go. If the trail is anything like it was yesterday, it's probably going to take me a while. I'm hoping that as the canyon opens up even more, it'll be easier hiking. We'll see. There's Fluffy. He's saying good morning. He's finally, he's finally getting out of the, getting out of the tent. He's been lollygagging in there for like an hour. Are you awake and ready to go? Well, I'm awake. I don't know if I'm ready to go. Sometimes I wonder what Fluffy actually thinks of all of this. He seems to be having a good time. But he also seems bewildered half the time. I just never know. I mean, I know a lot of dogs that think this was the most awesome thing in the world to be able to go get to do all these fun things. But Fluffy's kind of a couch potato for a husky kind of dog. Who knows? He's putting up with it very well. We are on the high water trail. Way down below me, you can see the river. It's probably 70 to 100 feet down there. I was trying to decide whether it'd be a good idea to hike down there versus hiking up here. This trail does go up and down a little bit, whereas hiking on the river, it's pretty flat. Just have to cross the river a bunch of times. I can see a trail down there, but I definitely, I think this is going to be the quicker route coming on the, on the high line, on the high trail definitely a lot more obstacles down below even though this is more up and down. Fluffy is a very happy camper at the moment and probably for the rest of the trail because I took his backpack off. He was getting it all hung up on the rocks up on the, the high trail and it just was more trouble than it was worth at that point. So I'm carrying his backpack along with my own. That's okay. Not that much further to go. Like the sun has not made an appearance yet today. It's still very cloudy. I'm not super unhappy about that because I suspect this would be a really hot and dry segment if it were not cloudy. That's the view behind me right now. It's so pretty. It's hard not to stop and take pictures every five minutes, but I need to make tracks. So I'm gonna make some tracks. And I think I've got to stop taking video and then, not a hundred steps later, there's this old cowboy signature. F.T. Johnson, May 30th, 1912. And oh my goodness, one more, because it is not often that you see clouds and mists like that in the rock formations and in the cliffs. That's pretty neat. It's raining again, but not too hard, and I'm wearing wool. I'm not cold. I'm just planning to get, I guess, a little bit damp.
portions of this trail go over bentonite. If you are not familiar with bentonite, this is it. And since it's been raining, it's wet. And this is what happens when bentonite gets wet. It builds up like massive layers and sticks to itself. Every step I take through this, it is building up more bentonite on the bottom of my shoes. There's bentonite in the soil all over the Western United States. Some places have higher concentrations of bentonite than others. Lots in the desert Southwest. It's not just a problem for hiking through. It's really a problem if you try to drive through it and it's wet. When it's dry, it's great. It provides a very firm surface. When it's wet, it just keeps building and building and building up on your tires and it's very slippery and <laughs> you get stuck very quickly. We've been pretty high above the river for a little while now, a couple hours, and I'm really glad the river is flowing much faster, much higher. I don't know whether that's because of the rain or because it just flows faster and higher down here. It might have tributaries that I don't know about feeding into it, making it higher down here, but I would not want to cross the river down in this section if I didn't have to. You can see that we're, the trail has come back down to the river and it is really flowing. It is really a ton siltier than it was. It's deeper, it's faster. I think that, I think that is because of the rain that we got. Yeesh. I would not want to be farther up the canyon right now. I should note, I'm not doing anything to make Fluffy sit majestically and cute like that. He just does. He's just naturally inclined to kind of majestic poses. We're having a hot lunch today. Hot, 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 hot. Pour it in. I should note that I got this chili oh, many years ago and I've brought it on a whole bunch of backpacking trips. And it's finally getting eaten. Mainly because it's a cool day and I felt like having a hot lunch. So we're gonna try out the black bark chili. I hope it's good. And I hope Fluffy likes it too because there's too much in there for just one person. I see blue skies ahead. That is a new development. I can't see now because there's so much sunshine. It's an acceptable chili. It's not awesome, but it's not bad. It's got too much cumin or something in it. But it's not bad. It's not my homemade chili. So I think I need to make some homemade jelly and bring that on my next backpacking trip. Probably with some cornbread too, because cornbread would be awesome with chili. We'll see what Fluffy thinks. He might not like it because it's a little bit on the spicy side, but not very much, not very spicy. I think this falls into the acceptable range for him. Fluffy decided he likes the chili. That's his second scoopful. <laughs> The high water trail kind of comes and goes. I've had to cross the river a number of more times. It's a little hairier crossing it down here. Definitely more mud, more quicksand. Current is faster. It's a little harder to choose a good crossing spot. So far we've done okay. Just going real slow poking the ground ahead of us with the hiking poles and I keep a pretty tight grip on Fluffy and so far it's worked out pretty well. Well, obviously we're still hiking. So, carry on. I'm ready to get back to the Jeep. I was warned about this spot by my driver. This is right by the Wilson Ranch and it's basically a mandatory water crossing. 
from the reports, there's spots where the quicksand goes up to your waist. That would not be fun. I can definitely verify there's quicksand that goes up to your knee. Love and I are gonna hug this wall. We've been hugging this wall behind us. In fact, you can see behind us. Been essentially walking on the red, making my own little path. And we're gonna carry on doing that until we get to the little sandy beach there. Got this wide sandy beach. And our destination is close. Hey, buddy. There's been a few minutes today where it actually got a little warm and I thought about taking off some layers, but did not have to. The sun came out, but has actually stayed behind the clouds. The sun is whoo, back there, but behind clouds. So it's actually fairly shady right now, right here. And mostly I've been walking in the shade and under cloud cover so it's it's been nice this this section really would not be fun if there were full sun especially in the summer we've got about three miles left to go i have no idea how many more river crossings we have it would have been interesting to count how many it's a lot we've got about two miles left we're about to enter Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. We've crossed the river a few more times. It's getting, it's pretty muddy, but it's, it's been doable. We've been, by choosing our spots carefully, have been able to get across in a pretty safe manner. I have the feeling that's not going to come out super well on my phone, but the light on the mountains in front of us is really lovely right now. Can you see that rainbow? Right there? That's so beautiful. Of course, it's still raining. <laughs> it's not like the rainbow after the storm. We're getting close. I have about a mile left to go. Fluffy's hooked to mom now. Because we're in the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area where dogs got to be on the leash. So Fluffy's on his leash. You know we're getting close when we've gotten to a trail register. We're almost there. We have three quarters of a mile left. Almost there. It's taking forever. Not that you can see, but we're crossing the Perea one last time. This time over a bridge, almost to long-term parking. It was well after dark. By the time I got to my car last night, it was raining and windy and cold and pretty miserable. Fluffy and I were very tired. And I did stay at the Lee's Ferry campground and I talked to the campground host who said that the Priya really in the last few days is running very fast, very strong. So I wasn't making that or I wasn't imagining things when I was thinking that the river was kind of raging a bit. It really was. This is the Perea Riffle and it's where the very muddy Perea River dumps into the Colorado. And normally, like when we were here on a raft trip, you didn't really notice it. You noticed there was a little riffle here, but you didn't, at least I didn't notice the mud. And there's a ton of mud dumping in the river right now. They've got the USGS services out here surveying the river because I think this is a pretty big river event. It's really kind of cool that this trip bookends with the Grand Canyon trip we did earlier this summer. That one started at Lee's Ferry. This one, we have ended up right back at Lee's Ferry at the end of this backpacking trip. We are not finished traveling. We have a bunch more destinations planned. Our next destination is the Black Rock Desert. I missed Burning Man this year, really sad about it. So we're gonna go visit Black Rock Desert and have our own little Burning Man, just me and Fluffy. And we're gonna visit hot springs that you're not allowed to visit while Burning Man is taking place. 
we're also going to see some fun things along the way. Some of them I have planned out. Some of them, who knows? You never know what we're going to find along the way. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. This is a very upset fluffy dog. The source of his upsetness is that he sees a bunny rabbit outside the car. He really wants that bunny rabbit. Do you want a bunny? Am I torturing you?